Psychics are tricky little bastards, and it's easy to fall for their ploy if you don't know what to look out for. This is a continuation of a series exposing their tactics, so make sure that you check out my previous videos on hot reading, cold reading tactics, and my psychic fail compilation videos, and subscribe for the next episode in this series. When you hear a statement like, you sometimes feel an extroverted urge to burst out of your shell, but reservations frequently inhibit these feelings and you're often comfortable allowing others to get the attention. How accurate is this description of you? This is an example of a rainbow ruse, a statement that attributes someone with opposing personality traits and lets confirmation bias do the rest. You see, nobody is entirely introverted or entirely extroverted. If you're more extroverted, you'll think, wow, I'm extroverted and sometimes introverted. This statement applies to me. And if you're more introverted, you'll think, wow, I'm introverted and sometimes extroverted. This statement applies to me. That's why this type of statement works so well, because the exact inverse of it works just as well. I would say that you often feel quiet and reserved, but when the mood strikes you, you can easily become the center of attention. If you're able to read someone's body language, it's not hard to slip a rainbow ruse into a live reading, making the rainbow ruse a valuable tool in a psychic con artist toolkit. And I get the sense that she's, for some reason or another, a little nervous. Um, the bereaved son doesn't respond to nervous, so Rosemary completely turns it around. Which is so not like her, because she's yes. really talkative <laughs> and pushy and out there. Yes. Nice save. Was she tall and short too? Next, we have Barnum statements, named after P.T. Barnum, whose circus claimed to have something for everyone. These are statements that literally apply to almost everyone. Statements like, Recently you have had to recover from a disappointment. Your sexual adjustment has presented some problems for you. You have a great deal of unused capacity. Other examples of Barnum statements include, you had an accident when you were a child involving water. You have a box of old unsorted photographs in your house. Or asking if an elderly person had pain in their legs, hips, or back, had trouble walking, or took a rough fall in their old age. And what about troubled legs? Do you understand the leg issue? Who's having the issue with walking? Was there a man with a cane, like a grandfather or a father yes, with a cane? This is Paul Zenon, a former psychic turned mentalist, exposing the tricks of psychics by reading a collection of Barnum statements to a TV audience. Without even directing it at the show host, he scored hit after hit with her, showing just how universally applicable these kinds of statements are. Um, there's an older man that you associate with the initial B, an older man who's probably in your family or close to your family, and he's always suffered long term with a pain at the sort of back of his chest region, okay? But when you think of him, you always think of that daft thing that he does that makes you laugh. The letter B, my dad's Brian. You're generally outgoing, you make friends easily, that would apply to number one as well. Uh, you are sociable, but just occasionally you feel really detached and insecure about yourself. It's almost as though you're kind of zooming out and watching yourself from a camera from above, something like that. I'm, I'm on TV, so everybody thinks, oh, you're all chatting, this and that, but you know, when I get home, I'm really quite quiet. You've got a scar, it's only a small scar, and it's not from an operation, it was from an accident you had years ago, and it's on your left leg in the middle. I have got a scar on my left leg in the middle. You make friends very, very easily but you've actually got very few close friends. And part of the reason for that is because you tend to bottle things up and you should let things go. And fairly recently, you feel you were betrayed by a friend. It's actually partly your own fault, but you still feel like you're betrayed by a close friend. All of those things. You have a recurring dream where you're falling, right? Not falling, but almost flying down an escalator or some stairs, right? This alternates, only, you only have it very sporadically with a dream about being held underwater. You're struggling to catch your breath. Well, it's kind of me, basically. All the I way mean, through, she's going, that's me. That's me. that's me. that's me. These are the same types of universally applicable phrases that psychics use. Does somebody work in the food business? Here's James Van Prog shotgunning one of these Barnum statements out into a crowd. Does someone have a scar in the, on the foot? I do. Thank you. Or here's Teresa Caputo asking a woman if her husband disliked the dish she cooked. Did you always cook him certain foods, but he didn't like it? If you're married to someone for years, you're pretty much guaranteed to find one dish that they're not fond of. Other Barnum statements apply to everyone in a particular demographic and can be used by psychics once they hone in on one specific person. For example, if I ask a four-year-old Texan boy if one of his parents is usually cold, that won't necessarily result in a hit. But when Caputo asked this elderly New Yorker woman, Did your mom always complain about being cold? That's a guaranteed hit. Old people people just get cold. It's what they do. Most grandparents thermostats have two settings, lava and the surface of the sun. Or here's Rosemary Altia asking this black dude if he had a family member who was very black. Whoa! 
Now, so much of the psychic guessing game relies on the audience to do most of the work. Do you understand that? This is no more apparent than when they throw out a number and ask their sitter to make it fit somehow. How do you connect with the number 13 and 15? I don't know if they're ages or the 13th or 15th of a month, uh, or it can stand for January, March, and May. Like an all-seeing spirit would use the number 13 or 15 to represent January? Come on. But let's look at one a little more specific. There's a five connection, five kids or five of one sex. So I don't know if she had five kids. She did, okay. That seems either pretty lucky or like a rather impressive hit. But what if she'd missed? What happens when a psychic gets a miss on a question like this? And where are the five kids in the family? Um, yeah, there's, there's more than five. Tell me. Six. So out of the psychic math now, we know we do five minus one, right? What's your job, Marlon? Five are similar, one's different. Okay. So how can um, I have five being similar, one being different? Um, not sure. Um, Is it that five are living in one's past? Or... Six no, are living in the yeah, past. six girls and... So how many total? I thought you were the psychic. Sorry, there's no, eight nine. altogether in the siblings. Nine. Is that nine. nine, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Nine. Big Thank fan. you. So there's six, all six okay. girls and three boys have passed. Males. So I need to do, in my way, it's got to be five and four, where mm. five have something in common and four are different. So are five close in age, four further apart, or <gasps> how many total passed? Three. No. I don't know how to, I don't know how to mm. split it, but I know it's got to be five and four. It's okay, John Edward. I'm sure you'll find some way out of this situation. And I know that somebody passed with something impacted to their head or something that affects their head, correct? Oh, just dismiss it and move on. No one will notice, right? Thomas Westbrook notices. When a psychic throws out a number, Where's the family of five of you? There's almost no limit to the number of ways you can make this fit. Five siblings counting yourself, five siblings not counting yourself, four kids in a miscarriage, counting and not counting you, family of five counting parents, two kids, two parents in a miscarriage, counting and not counting you, five boys and any number of girls, five girls and any number of boys, a mom and four girls, a dad and four boys, and you can apply this to your parents and siblings, or to your wife and kids, or to your wife's family. Or you can search for this number in the family of the deceased loved one. The list of possible combinations goes on and on and on, but if you're going to a reading hoping to connect with a lost loved one, you will eventually find a way to make the number stick. Just be aware that the psychic is simply throwing out a number and the sitter is doing all of the work for them. Where's the family of five of you then? Is it this five then? Is it like five of you or is it five connections? Or some might refer to it, six. Six. Psychic math, psychic math, psychic math. There's a two or a twin connection as well. Does she have two children now? She had two more after him. Had... Somebody's one of three? My cousin it was one of three with uh, the third being a second marriage. How do you uh, connect with the number three? You have three children? I have, well, I have two children. And you had a miscarriage? No, I didn't have a miscarriage, but I mm. consider my um, husband my third child. Ah, ah. So do psychics really talk with the dead? It's possible, but we know exactly how to replicate the results they get using purely natural methods. You don't have to use every one of these tricks to come off as psychic. The pre-show work covered in my hot reading video, the high probability guesses I exposed in my first cold reading video, the rainbow ruse, Barnum statements, these numbers games, any one of these tricks on its own is enough to fool an emotionally vulnerable victim unfamiliar with these tactics. And time and time again, hucksters claiming to be psychics have been caught using these exact same methods. Or perhaps I'm a raving lunatic and aligning your chakras with hippie crystals, transcendental meditation, and incense burning when the planets are aligned will open your third eye, allowing you to talk with dead people, read the Akashic records, connect with gods, and prepare yourself for reincarnation, overturning everything we know about how the world works and every law of physics known to man. But before you hand over your life savings to a psychic guru to guide you on your spiritual quest, let's explore how we can test psychic claims scientifically, or if we can test them at all. Are science and spiritualism two non-overlapping magic Hysteria? Or is that just a concession made by some scientist exhausted at this science versus the paranormal battle that's been hijacked and used as a hippy dippy cop out by cash hungry con artists terrified of being exposed? We'll cover that in my next video. So make sure you're subscribed and click that bell button to get notified. I got interested in mind reading and, and fortune telling, fake fortune telling, you know? And I got to know a lot of old fakes who had retired as millionaires, you know? And they told me their secrets how you do it. There are things that are called cold readings. A cold reading is you warm up the sucker by telling him things that he says, how could he ever know that, you see? You say, you know, between the ages of uh, 
13 and 15, you had a, a great change came in your life. But that happens in everybody's life. Yes. If you believe in my cause and you want to help support my work promoting science, curiosity, and free thought, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash holy kool-aid. Even just a dollar helps me to continue making these videos. If you're one of my supporters on Patreon, thank you. You guys are amazing. I can't make these videos without your support and your help, and it means so much to me. If you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button. I really hope you like the rest of my content. Feel free to like and share. You guys rock so much, and together, we're making a difference.